Hey guys, we're skipping 16. We're going to be skipping 16 because we haven't learned TOs and we're doing that on Monday when we get back. I'm on how to set up the equations, but we can do um, this word problem because it actually gives you the equation. So for the diploma, the rational word problems, they either make you set up the equation and then that's it, or they give you the equation and they make you solve it. But what they do not do is they do not make you find the equation and solve it. Okay? They don't make you do both. So here we have two hoses are used to fill a swimming pool. Hose A can fill the pool four hours faster than hose B. Okay? The two hoses can fill the pool in 4.8 hours. So hose A, hose B, four hours faster. So if B is X, then A would be X minus four because it'll fill it four hours faster. Um, and then they go a fraction of the pool in one hour. So we do one divided by X over four, one divided by X, and the time together is one divided by 4.8. This one would take the whole hour. Okay, so we do that. They add them up and they give you the scenario. So what does that mean? That means if I know we'll find out what X is, I can subtract four from there and get the time to fill with hose A. And then if I find X, it actually gives me the time to fill with hose B. If I want to know the fraction of an hour, I can fill it into here. So finding X gives us information. So here it says the length of time it takes to fill the pool with hose A alone to the nearest hour. So what we're going to do is we're going to find X first and then we're going to subtract 4. Alright, so we do have to solve for this equation. So we're going to do solving. Solving, you need to get a common denominator, right? So we get 1 over x minus 4, and then plus 1 over x equals 1 over 4.8. Now, in order to get a common denominator, there's nothing actually common to any of these denominators, so you have to multiply them by each other. So we're going to multiply this one by 4.8 times x. And remember, we don't distribute our denominators because there's no point. They're going to go away. This one, we have to multiply by 4.8 and x minus 4. And then this one by x and x minus 4. So, on the top, we're going to get 4.8x all over 4.8x times x minus 4. No point in distributing them because they're going to go away. Plus, and here we distribute the 4.8 in, so we get 4.8x minus... Nineteen point two all over four point eight X, X minus four. Equals distribute X squared minus four X. all over 4.8x, x minus 4. My restrictions, they can't forget about, are x can't equal 0 and 4 because of the denominator. Then I can put the numerators together on the side because I have a common denominator. So 4.8 plus 4.8. Oops, there's a chocolate thing right there. Chocolate head, 4.8. So 4.8 times 2 is 9.6x. 
times 19.2 all over 4.8 x, x minus 4 equals x squared minus 4x over 4.8 x, x minus 4. Now if our denominator is equal, we can then say that our numerators are equal to each other, and we can get rid of our denominators because we stated NPDs. So we get 9.6x minus 19.2 equals x squared minus 4x and subtract these over. We get 0 equals x squared minus 13.6x plus 19.2. And then our a is 1, our b is negative 13.6, and our c is 19.2. So we do not, our quadratic formula, x equals negative and negative 13, so plus 13.6, plus or minus the square root of negative 13.6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 19.2, all over, the entire numerator is all over 2 times a, so 2 times 1. So um, this breaks down to x equals 13.6 plus or minus the square root of 108.16 over 2. When I do the two of them, I'm going to get one of the answers will be 12, and then the other answer will be 1.6. 1.6 is extraneous. Why? Because if we look up here, if we plug 1.6 into B, or into A, sorry, we get 1.6 minus 4, and we get a negative time, which makes no sense. So I circle it, I put a line through it, and I say extraneous. And then this one wants the length of time it takes to fill the pool with hose A alone. Hose A alone. So a lot of people will put the answer 12, but hose A alone is this one. So it's x minus 4. So hose A time is actually 12 hours minus 4 which equals 8 hours. So it should be 8. Next question. This one says, Jared was asked to subtract the following rational expression. He begins by looking for the lowest common denominator of the expression. The lowest common denominator is. So they're not actually making you solve it. They're making you figure out the lowest common denominator. So this denominator factors to x minus 4x plus 4, because it's the difference of squares. And then this one factors to x, x minus 4. So they actually have an x minus 4 in common. And then this one is going to need x plus 4. And this one is going to need x. So the common denominator between the two of them is x, x minus 4, x plus 4. Which you have to pay attention and not pick B by accident. It's C. All right, next one. So this one here says, 
Two students multiplied the following rational expressions. A pair of true statements about the functions are student A stated the non-principal values incorrectly, student B simplified incorrectly, A stated the non-principal values correctly, simplified incorrectly, simplified correctly, stated the non-principal values correctly. So it's every option of non-principal values and simplification. So we just need to check and see if there's any errors. And there has to be errors because these two do not give you the same answer in the end, right? So let's look at student A first. Um, so student A, we get 3x plus 2. And we can do it up here too to help ourselves out. 3x plus 2. Bottom is the difference of squares. x plus 2, x minus 2. The top is 2 minus x which is actually the same as saying negative x plus 2. We can change them around if we want to. Over x plus 3. Now I see that these can cancel, but only if I take a negative 1 out. Remember if they're the right terms, wrong sign, I have to take a negative 1 out. And then this becomes a positive x, and this becomes a negative 2. And then they're going to be able to cancel. Well, if you look here in student A, step 2, she cancels these two, he, she, whatever, cancels these two off. See that? Well, you can't. Because this is positive 2 minus x, this is positive x minus 2. So this one errors in simplifying. Possibly NPVs. Let's check our NPVs. Uh, negative 2, positive 2, negative 3, negative 3, negative 2, positive 2. So the NPVs are actually right. So simplifying error, NPVs are right. Okay, let's check this one. So this one takes the negative 1 out and then cancels them off. Cancels these off. Okay, so then in the top they have negative 3 and the bottom they have x plus 3. Well, let's check it out. Let's do it to ours. minus 2, x plus 2, and in the top we're left with negative 3 over x plus 3. So their simplification is good. But their NPVs are bad. It needs to be negative 3, negative 2, positive 2. They stated NPVs after they canceled, which you can't do. You have to state NPVs before you cancel. So NPVs are wrong. So technically, let's see what we have here. Let's see what's right. Student A stated the non-permissible values incorrectly. That's wrong. They correct stated them correctly. So that's out. B. Student A stated the non-permissible values correctly. True. Student B simplified incorrectly. False. They simplified correctly. So we're good. Student A simplified correctly. That's not true. That's out. Student A stated the non-permissible values correctly. True. Student B simplified correctly. True. So it's D. Next question. So this one, Katie solved the rational equation shown below. Solve this. These are possible values of A. These are possible values of B. Let's see what it's asking. The solution is expressed in the form x equals A, x can't equal B, the code for a and b is what? Okay, so let's solve it and see. So we have 4x over x plus 1 plus 3 over x equals four over one. So we need to get a common denominator. Multiply this one by x. Put this under marker. Let's scroll up. Multiply this one by x. Multiply this one by x plus 1. These common denominators are what you need for solving and adding and subtracting. And then this one you're going to multiply by x and x plus 1. I always put the monomial first. So the x first. So you can join the 4x. So here we get 4x squared over x, x plus 1, plus 3x plus 3, over x, x plus 1, 
because we put the 4x together and then distribute. So 4x squared plus 4x. All over x, x plus 1. The common denominator so we can put them together. So we get 4x squared plus 3x plus 3 over x, x plus 1 equals 4x squared plus 4x over x, x plus 1. Now our denominator is equal, so we can say that our numerator is equal. Before we drop off our denominators, we need to state our restrictions or non-permissible values. That's going to be x can't equal 0 or negative 1. All right, so we solve this out. We get 4x squared plus 3x plus 3 equals 4x squared um, plus 4x. And then we can subtract our 4x's, or 4x squared, sorry. And we get 3x plus 3 equals 4x. Subtract 3x. And 3 equals x. And we have x can't equal 0 or negative 1. So I'll write it up here so you can see it. x equals 3. x can't equal 0 or negative 1. I'm going to scroll up for codes. So x equals a is the first code, so it equals 3. So that's code number 2. And then x can't equal b. b is negative 1 and 0, so it's 6. So if I filled in my numeric response boxes, fill in left to right, and only what you need to fill in, 2 and 6. I think it says 6. It doesn't look like one. This one? A little better. Not sure where I stopped recording. Oops. <laughs> I'll show you this one just in case I forgot to press record. It's paused and I don't remember when I paused it. Oops, this is what happens when you do it at home and not in front of class. All right. So this one here says an arrow is released from the top of a cliff. The table value uh, identifies the height h. Have you listed uh, 2 in b or y and the time in seconds. Then here it says using the quadratic regression. So I said I could pull this up and do a quadratic regression. So we go stat edit. <clears throat> and clear. We don't delete. If we delete, we have to just reset our calculator. So I have the numbers in front of me, and the numbers in front of you. So this would be 0, enter, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I've told you before, look over here, if the table had like 6 and then nothing, say it had this, and a blank, we just wouldn't put this whole thing into our calculator. Remember, it has to have an X and a Y in order for it to go in. If it has only an X or a Y, we don't put it in. Okay, and then we arrow over. And we have 25, 40, 45, 40, 25, and back down, zero. This is an arrow being released from the top of the cliff, and here it stops because it hit the ground. And we want a quadratic regression, so we go stat, calc, number, 
five because we only have options are four, five, six, nine, zero, C. Remember, if you're picking anything but four, five, six, nine, zero, C, you're picking a wrong number on your diploma. So we're picking quadratic number five. And if you have the old calculators, here you're going to go VAR, statistics, over to equation, enter. But with the new one, we go VARs, over to Y bars, enter, enter, enter. Now, if you're struggling because you don't remember how to put this in, you need to go back to your notes. You have a, a little cheat sheet, right, that you have to be able to do without the cheat sheet on your diploma. So we go to Window, and we make our, hit our data. So our lowest X is 0, our highest X is 5, and I'm okay with that because at 5 it hit the ground. So I don't need to make it bigger. But if you did, that's okay. Your Y minimum is the height, uh, so 0 will be the bottom. The top is 45, so I'm going to make it be 60 just to make sure I can see the top just in case it went higher. Boom, there it is. Now, our question asks us, using the quadratic regression, the height of the arrow after 3.2 seconds. So they gave us time, which is 3.2 seconds. Now, if we don't remember, we go back up to our chart. Oh, time is X. So they gave us x equals 3.2. And they went to the nearest tenth of a meter, so one decimal place. So I'm given x. When I'm given x, I can find y by going second, trace, value, 3.2. And I get 37.8. It is to the nearest tenth. 37.8. All right, next question. So here it has the graph of the polynomial function can be written in this form, where a is greater than zero. So I know I have a positive leading coefficient because it's a one and a one and a one, so I know it's up on the right. I also know b, c, and d. Um, x, x, and x would make this a cubic function. Also known as degree 3. Also known if it's up on the right, then we know it's down on left. So we can plug in values we want to. Um, And we have, let's say, y equals 2x plus 1, x minus 3, x plus 4, let's say. They want us to change, the only value that changes is a becomes negative. So now we're going to get y equals negative 2, x plus 1, x minus 3, x plus 4. And they want to know what happens. So we type the 2 in. When we type these in, we actually find out the zeros. The zeros are just the roots or x-intercepts, just to remind ourselves. All of those are interchangeable. Roots, zeros, x-intercepts. Stay the same, and the y-intercept changes. Going to this question. It says here, a new smartphone um, can be purchased for $840. So that's the initial value. See, they even give you the chart. Isn't that nice? 11 months later, the phone is valued at 601. 11 months later. The value of the phone can be modeled by this, where A is the value of the smartphone in dollars. T is the time in months. See how it says in months? So if T is in months, H is in months. And H is the half-life in months. Now, the half-life of the smartphone is. So they want us to find the half-life. They want us to find H. So we know that the final amount, or our A in this case, our A is 601. And it's depreciating. It's uh, decreasing exponentially because it's a half-life. 840. 
0 0.5 to the t, which is 11 months later. Time to reach final. Remember, this is final. This is time to reach final over the period of the half-life, so h. Our first step always, and we've went over this numerous times, is to divide the initial over. If we have initial and final, that's our first step every single time. Divide it over. So, does that reduce? I think so, but let's check. So we stay with this. We get six zero one eight four zero equals zero point five to the eleven over h. Now remember when we need an exponent, we convert it to a log every single time. You can use the formula off your formula sheet or you can use the rules. We go the base of our exponent becomes the base of our log, so I get zero point five. And what goes beside it is 601 over 840 equals 11 over h. And then when I don't know h, remember I swap. So this whole side and this denominator swap. Because the denominator comes up and multiplies, the h comes up and multiplies, and the whole log comes down and divides. So I get h equals 11 all over log 0 0.5, base 0 0.5 of 601 divided by 840, which equals 22.8 uh, minutes. Just want to double check it. Make sure you use your fraction button you have one. It's a lot easier. And make sure you use your log base button if you have one because it is a lot, lot easier. It's 22.8. It says nearest tenth. We always check for our rounding rules. The worst thing would be on a unit test or on a final that we lose, actually not lose marks, completely don't get any marks, even though we did it right because we rounded wrong because we didn't read. Okay, next question. The characteristics of an exponential function where a is greater than 1 can be selected from the table below. If in an increasing exponential, the function for the code for b, remember if it's increasing, if a is greater than 1, B, <clears throat> if it's increasing, has to be greater than 1. So that's code 1. And the code for the y-intercept, remember in this form, it's just 0a. This is always my y-intercept. So it's 4. Say you forget. Do you completely blank. Remember, you can put in numbers. You could go y equals, I'm going to say a is 3, right? So I can go 3, and then I try a b that's greater than 1. So I try a 4, and I see that it's increasing. And then I could try y equals 3, and I could try a half or a quarter, and I'll see that this is decreasing. So I know this is out. Remember, you can use your calculator by filling in things. So remember when we have y equals a, b to the x, just a little reminder, that this is your y-intercept. And if b is greater than 1, it's increasing, like doubling, tripling, half-life, we put, or doubling and tripling, we put like a 2 or a 3 in for that r. But if b is between 0 and 1, like 0 0.5, it's decreasing because it's a half-life. A quarter-life is between 0 and 1. Okay. 
next one. Let's see the print, but they are on your sheet. Is there an eye? So the characteristics of the exponential function were y a b to the x, where a is greater than 1, can be selected from the following. So an exponential function, let's remind ourselves, exponential functions have a horizontal asymptote. No short forming on any type of our diploma because short form gets you no marks. Horizontal asymptote on the x axis, and the x axis is not the x equals zero line. The x axis is actually the y equals zero line, it's the opposite. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, and if the graph is increasing exponentially, where b is greater than one, or if it's decreasing exponentially, where b is between 0 and 1. Either way, it will be, for you guys, 30-2, above the x-axis and going on forever. So because it goes on forever for the left and the right, no matter if it's increasing or decreasing, our domain is xer, and our range is above the x-axis. So it's greater than 0, not greater than or equal to. Remember, it doesn't touch the x-axis. There's a horizontal asymptote there. So it would be um, 1 in 4 if it was an increasing exponential. Now let's read. In a decreasing logarithmic, so if this was actually the exponential it gave you, it would be 1 4. In a decreasing logarithmic, which I hope they don't ask the question like this because they just gave you all exponential stuff and then talk about a logarithmic. I hope not, but we're going to use it anyways. Logarithmic graphs. These ones have a vertical asymptote. I think it's a vertical line on the y-axis. And the equation of the y-axis is actually x equals 0. And then it either increases and goes this way, or it decreases and goes this way. So my domain would be x such that x is greater than 0, because can't touch it, because that's where the asymptote is. And it's going all the way up and all the way down for life. So my range is y such that y is an element of the reals. So this one would actually be 2 would be the range, and the domain would be two. So our answer would be three, two. Next question. Ayana incorrectly solved the exponential equation 5 times 3 to the x plus 1 equals 75 for work shown below. So we have this, and then she puts those two together and makes it 15, which we know we cannot do. So the error is actually in step 1, right here. Remember I told you we can never multiply those together? So let's see how we actually solve it. I know it doesn't ask us to do this, but we're doing it anyways. So we're going to divide the 5 over. Remember that initial goes over to the final. It's just like the word problems. And then we do the 75 divided by 5. And we get 3 to the x plus 1 equals 15. Now I know I can't do common base here, so I have to convert. So I do the either match it up with your equations on your formula sheet, if that's how you do it, or convert with 
The base of my exponent becomes the base of my log. What's with it doesn't stay with it. I get a 15 beside it. Whatever's beside my log, I always put in brackets, equals x plus 1. And then I would subtract 1. So I would get x equals log base 3 of 15. And this is why I put it in brackets as well. Because you do that, and then you subtract 1. So you actually have to do log base 3 of 15 first, and then subtract 1. So I'm going to see what the real answer would be. It would be 1.5 to the nearest tenth, if I did the nearest tenth. So here we have the graph of a function has only one x-intercept. And it stretches from quadrant 4 to quadrant 1. So it's either exponential or logarithmic. They give you answers here. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. It stretches from quadrant 4 to quadrant 1. That, my friends, is a log. And it's an increasing log. So it's a. The next one. Uh, the logarithmic expression below has been expanded. So let's expand into this form. So they gave us the expanded form. So we can work our way back to this one. Remember, these don't have log bases. So I always put base 10 to help myself out. So I'm going to get 2 plus 3 log base 10 of c minus 1 half log base 10 of d. I can take the number and drop it into it. So I get 2 plus log base 10 of Oops. Let's tiny eraser. Uh, log base 10 of c cubed minus log base 10 of d to the half. This needs to be a log base 10. Now I'm going to tell you how to do this. This is more of a grade of a 30 1 question, but I'm going to show you just in case you get something like this. If I need to make a number be a log, I just actually put this number and then I raise it to the same log behind it. So we need log base 10. We know that because the rest are all log base 10. So we need to be log base 10. Well, what has to be beside here? So this just becomes, I want this to be a one technically if I just did the math to it. Well, I can make this be log base 10 of 10 because log base 10 of 10 is a one. So I can always just add that behind it and then it'll have a log. And these just stay the same, c cubed minus log base 10. d to the half is the same thing as getting square root of d. Remember we went over this in grade 10. This drops in front and becomes the index of the square root symbol. Now this 2 can join the 10. So we actually get log base 10 of 10 squared, which is 100, plus log base 10 of c cubed minus log base 10 of square root d. And then we can put them together because they all have plus or minus 1s in front and they're all log base 10. Remember, I have the same base and plus or minus 1s in front. So I get log base 10. Anything with a plus 1 in front goes in the numerator. Anything with a minus 1 in front goes in the denominator. So this has a plus 1 in front. So the 100 goes in the numerator. Plus 1 in front. So the c cubed goes in the numerator. Minus 1 in front. So the root 10 goes root 10, root d. I don't know why that's root d goes in the denominator. So my x could be root d. Now, my a is what's in front. So my a is 100. And my b is a 3. So I get 1, 0, 0. Okay, next one. 
They want what it's equal to. This is the second I believe. Okay, I'm gonna rewrite it because it's so small. So we go log base four of 64. Log base four of 64 minus two log base five of 125 plus log base a of a to the seven minus log base b of one. Okay, so for this one we can just type into our calculator. When we type that in, we should get a three. And then when we type this into our calculator, when it's all numbers, you can type it in. So you type this all in, you get six. The seven we can drop in front. So we end up with, I'll show you this, plus seven log base A of A. And remember log base A of A is just a one. If you don't remember that, you can go like log base six of six, log base eight of eight, log base 10 of 10, and it'll all turn in one. This is just seven times one. And the other thing here, minus log base b of one, this here, is just zero. Is b to what power is one? Zero. If you don't know, remember you could do this. You could go log base six of one. Oh, that's zero. You could go log base seven of one. Oh, that's zero. You could go log base um, 10 of 1. That's also 0. So it doesn't matter what the base is, it matters that beside it is a 1 and then the answer to that is 0. So we get a 0 here. So we actually get 3 minus 6 plus 7 which is a 4. Make ourselves a numeric response box, fill in left to right. Voila. Okay, this is base 10, this is base 10, so I can put them together, but I can't until I move this two up. Remember, I have to have plus or minus ones in front, so I get log base 10 of x plus 2 squared. Minus log base 10, x squared minus 4. So anything with a plus one in front goes in the numerator. Anything with a minus one in front goes in the denominator. So this is a plus one. So I get log base 10. And the x plus 2 squared goes in the numerator. x plus 2 squared is just x plus 2 twice. So I'm going to write it out twice. So this went in the numerator because it had a plus one in front. And this has a minus one in front. So x squared minus 4 goes in the denominator. Well, that is a difference of squares. So I go log base 10, x plus 2, times x plus 2, all over x plus 2, times x minus 2. All these cancel, and I'm left with log base 10 of x plus 2 over x minus 2. Now you do not have to write the base 10. I put the base 10 so that you spot that they're the same and you can put them together. So you actually rewrite it without the base 10 because when there is no base, we assume it to be base 10. Just like when there's no square root 2 on the square root symbol, we assume it to be a square root. And so this is D. So this one here, an expression that is equivalent. So let's put the 2 in first and the 3 in first. So we're going to get log base 3 of x to the 6, y to the 4, over x to the negative 12, 
y to the 3. And we can put that together. Remember that you subtract its division. And you have the same base, so 6 minus a minus 12 is actually x to the 18. 4 minus 3 is just a y. So it's technically over 1, so I didn't really need to write the denominator. So we go log base 3 of x to the 18y. And then these are expanded. Remember, they're just multiplied, so but you could um, separate them by plus signs. So log base 3 x to the 18 plus log base 3y. There's no answer of that yet. So we're going to distribute the 18 in front. We can if there's a log to the power rule. 18 log 3 of x plus log 3 of y. So that matches. Okay. So this one here, we have 8 to the negative 2 thirds equals 0 0.25. They just want it converted to a log, it looks like. So we go log. Base, remember, you can just match it up with your formula if, off the formula sheet if that's how you do it. Totally fine. I'm going to do the base of my exponent times the base of my log. What's with it doesn't stay with it. So I get 0 0.25, and it's going to equal the fraction, equal the exponent, negative 2 thirds, which is B. Okay, this one here. The height of a driver above the ground can be modeled by this. The height is in meters above the water surface. So water surface would be zero meters. At t is time in seconds. This is a degree two. This is a quadratic. Driver landing into water, right? These are all r's. I don't know why. They're just not showing up when they're being printed. So if we actually sketch this, it looks something like this. This is the diver. Oof. Now remember, we can't go negative time, and we don't count going into the water because it's the water's surface, right? So we have to find the height at which the diver jumps off. So that's 25. And we have to find when it hits into the water pool, so the x-intercept, which is 3.5 seconds from 0 seconds when it starts diving to when it hits the water, and then from 0 meters, technically from 25 to 0, the arrow should be going this way. Oh, oh, oh. 25 to 0, you're jumping downwards. Okay, so our domain is with t's because it's time, so it's going to be 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 3.5. Technically, if we do the whole thing, it would be t such that, and then t is now in the reals. That would be our domain. And our range is between 0 and 25. And our, it's h of t. They just used h, but it's technically h of t. Such that 0 is less than or equal to h of t is less than or equal to 25 h of t e r. Should be in a straight line, but I ran out of room. Remember, you have to use the variables in the equation. So this would be C. Next one. Dharma wants to invest $2,000 for two years. She's considering two options. Compounding semi-annually for 1.9%. Semi-annually, CP is 2 Compounding quarterly, CP is 4, at 1.6%. This is my initial, and my N is 2. This one, my I is 0 0.019, because we divide by 100. And this one, my I, my interest rate, is 0 0.016. So Dharma should choose which option has been an option blank since she will earn blank dollars more. So we need to find um, the interest, how much more money they're going to make. So let's find the final on both. So option A, 
is going to be final equals initial one plus 0 0.019 divided by two. And then we do two years times CP, just two. Option B, final equals 2000. 1 plus 0 0.016 divided by 4 for the compounding periods, and then 2 times 4 compounding periods. So when I type this one into my calculator, I get 2,077.09 cents. When I type this one in, I get 2,064.90. So interest is just taking off the final. So the interest option A made was $77.09 because I take the 2,000 off because that's what I went into the bank with. And the interest they made on this one is $64.90. And when I subtract the two, I get $12.19. So I know it's not this one or this one, and here it says Dharma should choose to invest in option A because it is more. So B is out. And then 1219, this one and this one. So where it doubles up is letter A. In 1883, a volcano. A volcano um, on the island of Krakatoa erupted. It is the loudest known sound in the history, measuring 880 decibels. We worked in bells, just so you know. So it'd be 18.0 bells. Not decibels, bells. Because bells are base 10. So this formula is 10 to the m1 minus m2. can be used to compare the, ident the intensity of a sound. If the sound of an operating jackhammer measures 130, point, 130 decibels, that's 13.0 bells. Then the Krakatoa explosion is louder than the jackhammer by a factor of 10 to the what? So we're going to go intensity. And then for I2 just represents the intensity. And it's louder than the jackhammer by. So we do 18.0 minus 13.0. Make sure you use bells, not decibels. And so we get 10 to the 5. So A is just 5. And we omit this question because it doesn't make any sense. It's missing information. Remember, sinusoidal is always in radian mode. I'm going to write this up here. Everything in 30-2 is in radian mode. We should be happy about that because 30-1 isn't the same. Radian mode, radian mode, radian mode, radian mode. Remember, when your calculator is reset, it resets into radian mode. Don't let someone be kind and switch it to degree for you. That is not kind. Okay? They think they're being kind. They don't know any better. But in 10 and 11, we always switch it back to degrees because we're kind. So remember that when it gets reset, it is in the mode it needs to be in. Check, make sure it's in radian mode, and then leave it like that for the rest of the exam. So the height above the ground of a rider on a Ferris wheel, and above the ground, can be modeled by this function. This is height, and this is the little rider. Where h is the height of the rider in meters, above the ground, and t is the time in minutes after the wheel begins turning. So the height at which the rider gets on the Ferris wheel. They want to know the height when it gets on the Ferris wheel. When it gets on the Ferris wheel, that's a fancy way of saying time equals zero. So we can do it algebraically. We could go h of zero equals, when it's time, it's easy to do algebraically. Sine 1.05 times zero plus 12, and type it right into your calculator. And when you type that right into your calculator, you get 12. Or, 
you could actually find the y-intercept. So you could just type it. Oh, I'm good at telling the eraser right now. Uh, you could type x equals zero into your calculator. So you'd have to type this into your calculator, get a proper window. Now let's talk about windows here. Okay. Remember, how do we find the maximum from an equation? Well, we do the d midline plus the amplitude. So the maximum that this graph is going to go is going to be the midline, which is 12, plus the amplitude, which is the absolute value of 8. So the highest this Ferris wheel goes to is 20. Now if we want to do the minimum, we do d minus amplitude. Remember, it's not alphabetical. It's not a d. It's d minus a. makes a difference. It, you will be wrong. And they will have the option there. So we do 12 minus 8, which is 4. So this Ferris wheel actually starts at 4, and it goes to a maximum of 20. So if I make my window, my y minimum 0, and I want to see the top of the Ferris wheel, I can just make my y max higher than 20, so 21. If I do that, I have the window for that. Now if I want to know how long it takes to rotate, I can time the period. Remember the period is 2 pi divided by b, it's right on your formula sheet. So this one would be 2 pi divided by 1.05. Now if I type that into my calculator, I get 5.98, so technically 6 minutes. So this thing rotates in 6 minutes. So if I made my x min be 0, I can make my x max be 12. And I would see this whole graph revolving twice. So I could do it that way as well. Just a reminder of how you find stuff on your calculator when you're given an equation. And what the period is, the max and mins are. So here we have a sinusoidal graph has a minimum point of 2 and negative 3. If the equation of the midline is 4, then the amplitude of the graph is what? Well, let's do a little sketchy sketch. Okay, so 2 and negative 3, that's my minimum. I have a midline at 4, y equals 4, which is a horizontal line. Now remember, the distance from the minimum to the midline is half of the graph, right? It's half of my sinusoidal function. So this is my amplitude. From the minimum to the midline and the maximum to the midline is the amplitude. So if it wants the amplitude, we can just count. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. How many steps did it take me to get there? 7. So my amplitude is 7. So for this one, we have a Ferris wheel has a radius of 8 meters. Its center is 10 meters above the ground. Remember that radius is half the distance. So that's a fancy way of saying amplitude. It has nothing to do with this, but I'm just reminding you. Its center is 10 meters above the ground. The center is the midline or median value. Remember the midline is a line. So this would have a midline at y equals 10. Its median value would be 10. It's a value I don't need an equation for. A rider gets on the Ferris wheel at the lowest point, that's important, so you're not flying them in, and completes one revolution in 48 seconds. One revolution is the period. And this would be enough actually to get the equation if we had a C value given to us, but they're nice and they give us the entire table. So we're going to type that in the height of the Ferris wheel to nearest meter, 36 centimeters above the ground. It's a Ferris wheel. It's a sinusoidal function, so we're going to find a sinusoidal regression. So I'm going to go stat, edit. 
clear, enter. Clear, enter. We're gonna type in our values, so we get zero, 12, 24, 36. And wait, if you look at 36, it has a question mark beside it, so we are not inputting that in. So unless there's an X and a Y for it, we don't input it. So I skipped 36, I put in 48, and I put in 72. And I arrow over, and I get 2, 10, 18, skip, and 2, 18. It's a Ferris wheel, so it's a sinusoidal, so we go step, calc. Number it's four, five, six, nine, zero, or C. Sinusoidal is the C. So you can arrow up and get there faster. But you could arrow down and get to it as well. No bars, my bars. Okay, so I have my equation. I immediately go to my window and I change it to fit the data. So zero to 72, so I'm going to go zero to 144. I like doubling it. And then the height would be zero. Looks like it maxed out at 18, but it could go higher. We might not see that, so we'll go 24. Oops, Lyman is, oops, X scale is far, uh, we'll put it 10. Minimum is zero, maximum 24. It doesn't need to be that high, but I'm going to anyways. And then press graph and see if I can see it. If you can't see it, your window's either wrong or you're in degree mode. So make sure you check that you're not. Now, here it wants the height of the Ferris wheel at 36 seconds. So that's t equals 36 seconds, and that is in x. Now remember, if you type 36 into x and it errors you, it's probably because your window's not big enough. So like my window contains 36, but if it didn't, it'll error me. So I go second, trace, value, 36, enter. And I get 9.5. 9.5, but it says to the nearest meter, so that's 10. Okay, next question. Going to have the numerical response multiple choice, which is not much longer. Two more questions. Okay. So this one here, talking about minimums, maximums, and amplitudes for these. So I'm going to find the minimums, maximums, and the amplitudes for every single one. So if I do this one, I'll do this one in black. The amplitude is the absolute value base, so it's four. So the amplitude, and I'm not going to write amp, don't short form, amplitude equals 4. I'm going to do this one out this side, I'm going to do this one out this side, I'm going to do this one out this side, I'm going to do this one out this side, so I have space. So the amplitude is 4, the maximum is d plus the amplitude, so 5 plus 4. which is 9. My minimum is d minus amplitude, so it's 5 minus 4, which is 1. So then I'm going to do this one. So my amplitude of b is 3. My max is my d, negative 7 plus my amplitude which is negative 4. My minimum is my d minus my amplitude, which is negative 10. This one has a plus 0 at the back, just so we know. Our midline is 0. So our amplitude of this one is 8. I don't care that it's negative 8. 
the amplitude is always positive because it's the distance from what happens from the min to the max or the distance from the midline. So it's going to be 8. And then my maximum is my d plus my amplitude, which is 8. And my minimum is my d minus my amplitude, which is negative 8. And then I will do so this one has an amplitude of six. Even though it says negative, it doesn't matter. Our amplitude is always positive. I have a maximum at d plus the amplitude. I have a minimum at d minus the amplitude. So here it says function A has a minimum of negative 1. Not true. Function C has an amplitude of negative 8. Not true. Function B has a maximum of 10. Okay. Has a maximum of negative 4. Function A has an amplitude of 4. True that. And function D has a minimum of negative 2. True that. So it's D. One more. So here we have a sinusoidal graph, a maximum of 4, 5. I'm really glad to help myself out. A minimum of 8, 8, and negative 3. Uh, the equation can be written in the form m sine pi over 2 minus p. Values of m, n, and p. Okay, so m is my amplitude. And my amplitude is the absolute value of the max minus the min divided by 2. So it's 8 divided by 2, which is 4. The P is my midline. And it's max plus min divided by 2, which is 3. Oops, P divided by 2, which is 1. Is that to a plus sign. And then the period equals 2 pi over b. But we want b. We want the period, not the period. So it's 2 pi over the period. Now, what is the period? Well, they gave us from the distance from the max to the min. Right here. distance. Min to the max is a distance of 4. Remember, a max to a max is a period, a min to a min is a period, a max to a min is half of a period. So we know the period then equals 4 times 2, which is 8. So we're going to get 2 pi over 8, which equals pi over 4. My m is 4. This is pi over 4, so my n is 4. My m is 4. And my p is 1. And I don't know why they put this minus sign. Is it a typo? Is it a plus? Yeah, it's still minus negative. It should be a plus. So we are going to get 4, 4. And that's it for the multiple choice portion. And I'll do a post tonight for the written response answers. And then tomorrow is something totally different. Totally different review. Have a good day.